Max Martin has the most number one hit songs of any songwriter in the last 30 years. And he's in all time third place after only Lennon and McCartney. What's interesting about Martin is that he writes for so many different artists, while other writers on the list tend to sing their own songs. So how is this Swedish guy able to consistently pump out so many hit songs, and what do all these songs have in common? Well, in this video, I'll give you five things that all Max Martin number one hit songs have in common. Let's get started. Learn audio engineering. Learn audio now. Sound strategies to sound goals. Hi, I'm Robert from LearnAudioEngineering.com. Now, Max Martin has said that there's no formula for a popular song, and that a good song is never born from a formula. And while that's probably true, the guy has also consistently pumped out hit songs for the world's top selling artists for well over two decades. So if anyone has a formula for creating a hit song, it's definitely Max Martin. So I want answers. I want hard data on what makes this guy's songs consistently top the charts. So this week, I researched all 22 of his number one hit songs, threw the data into Excel, and now it's time to analyze. It's gotta be something. It's gotta be something. You got it. It's so simple. Okay, so I'm gonna share what the data shows, what all these songs have in common, and then as well as some arrangement and production tips from Max. And then I have some free goodies for you guys that I'll sprinkle into the description. Of Max's 22 number one hits, 73% of them were in a major key, the most common key being G. The infamous four chords were the most popular choice in major, with nine of the songs using some variation of the one, five, six, four progression. In minor, there were also some clear favorings of some certain diatonic chords. Now most of the songs had between three to four chords in them, with no song featuring more than six chords. The verses, pre-choruses, and choruses of all of the songs were structured in typical multiples of four bars with only one exception. The bridge sections, though structured in a very similar way, did have a few odd numbers in there, showing us that Max isn't opposed to breaking rules, creating tension, and breaking our expectations, or just doing what sounds good. But what do they all have in common? That's the reason I clicked on this video, please just tell me. Okay, fine, but first, please subscribe to this channel if you're new, we're almost at 500 subscribers and I know that we can make it to that magic 1000 subscriber milestone. And if you're already a subscriber, please go ahead and share this video with a friend. Here we go. Number one, the first thing that all these songs had in common is the start time of the first chorus. They all hit that chorus in under a minute, with most getting there by 40 seconds and the earliest being 31 seconds. So what does that tell us about modern music production? Your audience has a much shorter attention span and there's much more competition for their attention than ever before. Get to the point, get to the hook, get to the payoff as soon as you can. Now Max has got this aspect of composition down to a science and you'll notice that in songs with a slower tempo, the verses have half as many bars as songs with a faster tempo. A faster tempo means that you can fit in more bars before getting to that magical 40 second mark. Number two, all of the lyrics read clear and straightforward. The language analysis software shows us that all song lyrics read well below a fourth grade reading level with the lowest ones scoring around grade one. Pink's So What came in at a reading level of zero, but of course, most of the song is just na 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 nas, so go figure. The highest reading level was a tie at 3.7 between Taylor Swift's We Are Never Ever Ever Getting Back Together and Katy Perry's E.T. Of course, if you take out Kanye West first, it scores almost a whole grade point higher. I am Shakespeare in the flesh, Walt Disney. So what does this mean? Is pop music just unintelligible garbage that is encouraging the dumbing down of our society? Well, possibly, but keeping the language of our lyrics simple also makes the meaning of the song much more accessible. Now, an important observation to make here is that Max is not a native English speaker. He grew up listening to English music without actually knowing what all the words meant. So he focused on the sound and the shape of the words and how that fit the melody. It goes back to the whole Swedish way of writing, I think. Because um, in, the, in the chorus, I still don't know what he's saying. Mm. Uh, but there's something, uh, nah, 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 and a popcorn, and a, I thought he said popcorn, yeah. which I thought it was awesome. <laughs> um, 
And, uh, and, but it, was, it stood out to me. And, and I think a lot of us growing up, yeah. not knowing the language, mm. we gravitated to, towards those things that sounded cool. You know? yeah. Something to that, the, the way we listen to a lot of suites, I think listen, um, or actually outside uh, uh, English-speaking mm. countries, uh, listen to, they, you listen to the sound and you make up what it's about. I, I believe that the sound of a melody is crucial. I think yeah. a, a great melody can be ruined by a bad sounding lyric. A great example of this is the famous lyrics from his first number one single, Hit Me Baby One More Time, or the scandalous subject matter of Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl. I, I was watching the news, uh, like uh, clips from, from the States, where, you know, the news reporter was out in the streets. I, oh, would you let your, you know, kids listen to this thing? You know, kissing girls, a girl kissing a, and and that, and I was like, oh my God, this is going to be huge. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> They're a asking the parents about these things. It's like yeah. great, but um, but it turned into this whole thing in churches, and you know, they they went bananas. Yeah. It was it was brilliant. So this gave him a different perspective than native English speakers who might obsess over the correct meaning of the words or the grammar or syntax within a song. The lyrics sounded cool to him and they fit the shape of the melody that he was looking for. I can relate to this when listening to music that was written in a different language like Rammstein or KMFDM. I can pick out a few words, but overall I'm not really sure what the song is about, so I tend to make up my own meaning based on the delivery of the lyrics. And if English isn't your native language, I would love to know your thoughts on this. Please let me know in the comments. Number three, they all have very simple, common harmonic structures with mainly three to four chords and no more than six. But I already mentioned that. Number four, they all have short, unique intros. You can recognize each of them right off the bat. They pull you in right away and provide a quick context for what to expect in the rest of the song. And again, the faster the tempo, the more bars he allows for an intro. Now, typically there are around four bars with some of them as short as one bar and even using the chorus as the intro. And as Max says, you should be able to recognize this song after about two seconds. Now we had this uh, philosophy of, because he came from the DJ world to, you know, and to keep people on the floor when you change the song, you had to, it couldn't be like, you know, What's this? It had to be something. He liked playing songs where they knew exactly what it was, just from the very start. And number five, they all develop slowly and introduce one new sound or instrument at a time. Production and songwriting go hand in hand these days. The old method of, well, here's a song, let's arrange it, doesn't really work with a lot of electronic pop music production, as sounds and timbres are often used as inspirations for the entire arrangement. And also, our ears can't process all these new things at once, so to really get the most out of each new element, Max is really careful on how these sounds are introduced and how they develop the arrangement of the song. This prevents overwriting and leads to one of Max's biggest philosophies, simplification. Uh, because just a lot of times you overwrite. There's only so much information you can... For me, it's hard to... If it's more than three different parts, maybe four. Mm. Um, but it needs to be... If you... Because if you, Prince usually wrote like... Da, na, 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 de, 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 you know? And then he used that yeah. in the chorus. And he was like, yeah, it's great. Let's, do it, you know, mm. let's use it a lot. Yeah. Um, but then obviously you need uh, things to keep it interesting. Yeah. That's why you put that pre-chorus there, that you go somewhere with the chords and, you know, to sort of, ah, and, oh, and then you go back to the thing. Mm. And it's like a new thing again, mm. you know? Used in combination, these tricks can provide a toolbox of problem-solving formulas. Have a busy verse, chill it out in the pre-chorus. Use one note a lot in the pre-chorus, don't use it in the chorus. Build tension and create balance. Find simplistic lyrics that tell the story, and trust me, that's enough. But I believe that, the, to me, the greatest thing is when it's someone who's an amazing singer sings something really simple. The, the trick is to write something simple that, that's still interesting. Mm. It's, it's hard mm. to do that. Mm. And, and also, at the same time, be unique and, mm. and, uh, and all of that. Because mm. there are only so many notes, you know. Mm. So... We have to take every trick we can to fool ourselves to get there. A good song never starts with a formula, but hopefully these tips can help you build your next production and its arrangement. If you'd like some arrangement templates, check the description below because I've got the structure of all 22 of Max's number one hits mapped out for you, as well as the Excel file for you to see all of the data and draw your own conclusions. 
Use the templates as a jumping off point, something to grab onto and get creative with. Use the limitations and feel free to break them. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe for fresh weekly content. And if there was a hit song formula, how would we map out the average Max Martin song? Well, according to the data, it would be in the key of G, a BPM of 113. It would use four chords, feature simple lyrics with a second grade reading level, and it would use this basic song form. Now, what would that song sound like? Well, I'll save that for another episode. See you next week, guys.